<clears throat> okay, working. If that happens again, I, I will end the meeting again immediately and just double check that that feature is there, see if there's even a more secure way to do it. Whew. Of all the Zoom meetings I've attended, that's the first time I've ever seen that happen. I've yeah. heard horror stories, though. Mm hmm. Agreed. Me too. If you password protect the meeting and kind of spell out some of the characters on the password when you, where you post the individual meeting information, it doesn't pick it up because they have basically bots going through and just snagging anything with the Zoom. Hmm. Okay, so, so we could try that for next time. Here at school, we're very familiar with Google Meets, but not too familiar with Zoom yet. <laughs> all right, are we all here then? Jen, Jeff, Tara, Steve, Donna, Dallas. Did you miss somebody? And Dave is there, right? Dave oh, yeah. was there. Is he still there? And I see yep. you. There. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I'm going to remute again and I think it's probably safe to pick up the meeting again, everybody. Very sorry about that. Donna, you are muted. I think we were unfortunately um, interrupted while Okay. Tim was giving a presentation, correct, Tim? Yep, Tim was up. Mm -hmm. Tim, are you recovered? <laughs> Can everyone hear? Can everyone hear me? Yes, I can. Again, we are well into phase three. We are targeting a early March completion of the majority of the construction. And other than the two components of phase three, I'll update you on our new boilers. The new boilers have all been set and the new heating manifolds for the pumps and auxiliary items have been all welded up and are hanging in place. And plumbers are currently plumbing everything up. The new circulating pump motor arrived on site last week. So we think we have all of the components necessary to complete the boiler install. And we anticipate that being wrapped up here in February. Bay Electric has in stock all of the LED replacement lighting components. And we anticipate that work being done on afternoon shift in February as well. We also had a number of security items that we've been taking care of during the course of the project. Everyone is aware that we replaced most of the main entrances to the school along with new security hardware and card reader access. We also replaced all of the lock sets in the school and rekeyed the entire campus. So that was a great upgrade. We are also in the process of installing 24 new cameras to tie into the existing security system. And we also have installed throughout the high school new polycarbonate backup panels for all of the high school classroom doors for extra added security at each of those locations. So in addition to the new locks at the classroom and hallway doors, we've done a, a major amount of work there. The uh, new display case in the lobby is near completion. We're just waiting for shelves and LED lighting for that. And just before Christmas, we were able to complete all of the new hand railings for all the new entrances. Of course, everyone saw the new temporary railings that were there at Thanksgiving. But with the break in the weather, we were able to get the new pipe railings installed and the building inspector approved those last Friday morning. And I think everyone's seen outside on dark mornings, we have the new flashing caution signs in place at every entering street into the campus. So those are a nice safety feature as well. So things are coming along well. Again, we're hoping within the next six, seven weeks to be wrapped up with the majority of the construction. Are there any questions from the board? Sounds 
Sounds awesome. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. So now we will move on to public comment. Can everybody hear me okay? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good, good. Okay. Now we'll open the public, now we'll open the public comment section of our meeting. If anyone in the virtual audience would like to make a comment to the board, please click on the three dots and use the raise hand function. And we will ask you to unmute when it is your turn. Remember that the board does not respond to questions or statements during public comment. Also, if anyone would like to make a public comment and are unable to use the raise hand function, you may introduce yourself now. I don't have the option to do a raise hand. Yeah, I'm sorry. It looks like something happened with that too. I just saw that that had disappeared from mine as well, Holly. But if, um, yeah, I think if people do it one at a time, like Donna was just mentioning, that's just fine too. Okay. Do you want me to go? Donna, is it okay? Sure, if sure. Goes first? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Okay, um, good evening. That was quite the little kerfuffle, but um, a quick thank you to all the teachers and staff who continue to keep the ball rolling while we deal with the whole COVID stuff. Um, after setting up my initial email requesting information from all the board members on August 27th, 2020, about four and a half months ago, I would like to mention that as of this afternoon, all members except Dallas Bond has responded to any of my inquiries. I haven't received any form of correspondence with him. Um, during the November meeting, Mr. Bond even acknowledged that I was looking for contact, but he still has yet to reach out. Before the board votes to appoint individuals to their respective roles, I'm hoping that the board will decide as a group to participate in the certified board member awards program offered by the Michigan Association of School Boards. This pro program is geared towards school board members and members learning ways to develop new skills, stay up to date on educational issues, and earn recognition for professional development as a school board member. I think there's been some confusion as to what exactly being a board member entails. And I think this would be a great pro program to advance our elected members' knowledge. I believe that no one in the community would question any expenditure related to enrolling our board members in this program. I've looked at the NEOLA policy manual and it indicates under code PO0142.7 adopted June 18, 2018, the board believes that the preparation of each board member for the performance of board duties is essential to the effective functioning of the board. The board shall educate new board members to understand the functions of the board, acquire knowledge of matters related to the operation of the district, and learn board procedures. It goes on to say that the board is encouraged to attend orientations and training sessions to expand the no their knowledge of their roles. I'd like to know if any of you as board members have attended any type of seminar or in-service pertaining to your roles as a board member. I'd appreciate an email from each uh, board member sharing any training that you have received pertaining to your role on the board. I understand that you guys are barred from making any type of comments to you, the constituents who have voted you into your roles, but I believe it is important to make sure that those who are entrusted into making our decisions are to follow that our education are, excuse me, I believe that we are those entrusted with making the decisions that our educators are to follow are in fact educated themselves. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Holly. Do we have another public comment? Kristen here, I have a comment. Okay, go ahead, Kristen. Thank you. Um, I wanna acknowledge that I heard Holly's comment and I like her idea about encouraging the MASB training. Uh, so just wanted to start there. Uh, I have a few items that I wanted to uh, comment on tonight, and I wanted to start with an appreciation. Um, I appreciate the school districts changing to the Zoom format, which I think is a lot easier for people to access. And it also allows the easy meeting recordings, which expands participation in the community. 
Also, uh, I want to commend the school district for making that switch. I hope that it goes on um, because it, 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 this is a very easy to use format. Yes, we had a glitch, but the, these glitches can be overcome. Uh, I also want to appreciate the board members tonight. I see that the board members are visible and I appreciate that. And also Tim Sepinen, that those that are speaking on behalf of the board um, are using their uh, video camera. I just want to thank you for that. Uh, I want to uh, next say that I sent out an email uh, in December on December 20th that had three attachments. One was a follow-up response on the Karen Ham cost savings, uh, the back and forth that um, we've had with the, that I've initiated with the school district. The second was a citizen's memo with citizen suggestions. And the third were comments on Christina Norland's 2020 evaluation from the citizen's perspective. Uh, and in particular in regard to the community relations portion of her evaluation. I requested an acknowledgement of the email as well as a response to uh, the 2020 evaluation to find out was it completed during the closed portion of the November meeting or not? Uh, what was the rating? Uh, what is the status of that? I prefer the way that it was handled last year when it was clearly stated in the meeting minutes so that people could tell. And then the board actually did a voting on what that scoring was. So either that was not ha did not happen publicly or it hasn't happened yet, or but nothing happened. I haven't received any response back regarding the email or the particular inquiry on the evaluation. And the last topic I have is that at the end of the email, I referenced a new UPER CARES a citizens group initiative that we will be reporting on the citizens experience with the school district on a yearly basis. And what we wanna do is to capture some of our key concerns and whether they are being responded to. And I'm still working this out and working out the format, but I wanted to um, give a few examples that I have um, submitted in the citizens um, review, but to make an extra comment on it. Um, a couple of items that have been suggested to the school board in the past and have not been implemented as of this time are adopting the MASB school board governance standards, which the school board could do. Uh, and another example is uh, adding the public comments recorded into the meeting minutes. And uh, I was very specific about that last year in asking that we not simply include a, the public made public comment, but actually go into the detail about what the public said. So the, those are examples that are still outstanding. Additionally, the no trespass directive against myself and Cindy Barth, um, that has not been removed. And so these are examples of items that we'll be tracking um, as on an ongoing basis to say, is anything shifting? Is the board listening to us? Uh, newer items that we've added are, um, are the meeting recordings available online? Um, that is a pending, that's been a newer suggestion. And then the board did address the one about live streaming, the Zoom meetings, and then now also recording. So we appreciate that. So we're simply looking for um, citizen concerns to be listened to by the board and to be addressed um, when we make reasonable suggestions. Um, so once again, I'm still working on the format. I will be uh, sending something out to all the board members and the school district. And I would appreciate an, a response back to that December 20th email. Um, I also sent an email with a follow-up on the um, COVID funding, but my follow-up just went out today. So I'm, I'll look forward to a response back um, on that. That was sent to Christina, Tyler, and Danielle. And that's my public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have another pu public comment? Yeah, I um, would like to take a moment of opportunity, if I may. Sure, go ahead. So um, my name is Matt Zimmer, just in case something's funny on the recording. Um, I do want to mention right away that I am speaking solely on my behalf and represent nobody else but me. Um, by the nature of public comment, the community member, as we're seeing, doesn't know where things go after we speak, what was heard, and, and what a response might be, and our expectations expectations of response are oftentimes different than a board member. So um, I just want to thank, um, I want to thank people who followed up with me during my November public comment. Um, I want to thank Christina Norland, who, you know, worked to understand 
what what my statements, what were the background of my statements, what was I trying to communicate, as well as what was really the perceptions that were driving our comment. And I, I want to thank her for that, as well as some of the board members that followed up with just a real simple note to say, hey, we're looking into it. Um, it allowed me to receive some confidence that I was heard, that my voice was not cast into an empty void. So I do want to thank um, thank those that did respond to let me know that you are hearing what we say. Um, that was That's an essential part of communication. Um, my second thing I do want to bring up is it deals with our school's plan <laughs> and um, dealing with coronavirus safety and risk mitigation. Um, you know, our district has had a policy from the very beginning that we're putting our students' safety first. And we are going to use the best scientific knowledge and recommendations forward on that. That hasn't been the case in many districts around here. And I appreciate the fact that the board and the administration has come through right from the beginning with their plan and has supported their plan and backed up the teachers from the very, very beginning. This coronavirus working, working with students has been an absolute burden, but that burden has been eased when we have support from above. And I want to thank the district for being willing to take any backlash, heat, or resistance into mitigating what, or into implementing the policies that they really felt were best to protect our student safety. Um, whatever they were, whether everybody agreed with them or not, I thank the board for being willing to take that, that heat and the administration for taking that heat so the teachers didn't have to feel that burden. So thank you for that. And that's what I had to say. Thank you very much, Matt. Appreciate that. Okay, all right. Do we have any more public comment? Anyone else? Okay, yes, we'll move on to our organizational meeting. And Steve, you would take it from here. All right, um, at this point, uh, I will ask for any nominations for uh, the position of president of the Dollar Bay Tamarack City School Board. I would like to nominate uh, Mrs. Donna Engman to continue in her role as president of the Dollar Bay Tamarack City School Board. I would like to second that. Are there any other nominations? With that, uh, we'll um, see that there's a nomination for Donna Ingman as president of the school board with a second, and um, we'll cast our votes. And, and I, I do accept the nomination. And then you can go ahead with the casting of votes, Steve. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I suppose if you did decline, then we wouldn't. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Um, Steve Beauclair, yes. Uh, alphabetical or <laughs> I'll just go as a, um, Dave Mackey. Yes. Dallas Bond. Yes. Jeff Stevens. Jeff? Jeff, you're muted. Yeah. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Yes. Sorry. That's okay. Um, Tara Janke. Uh... Tara, do you have your vote? Tara is having trouble. She was just texting me with her screen. It sounds like her computer screen just went blank. Okay. Um, she's she's messaging me um, just to let you know that her screen went blank. So she is um, 
She's trying to figure that out and I'm going to see if I can help her figure that out too. So I think we'll probably have to skip her vote at this time. All right, Jen Stout. Yes. And um, does the nominee vote as well? Tara just sent a yes. <laughs> I saw that, okay. All right, Donna Ingman. Yeah, I accept. Well, we have, we'll check back with Tara here. And I see she's sent out the text message that yes would be her response. So we have, um, it's a unanimous vote for Donna Ingman for president of the school board. Okay. And I'll pass this along to Donna for the remainder. Okay, then we're gonna move along to nomination of board vice president. Do we have a nomination for vice president? Um, Donna, I'd actually like to nominate the mm. entire slate of remaining officers uh, those being to continue for yet another year. I think it's in our best interest to have continuity uh, through the duration of the bond project. Thank you, Dave. Is everybody else? I think we still have to go one by one though, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, you're right. Okay, so- I'm Well, no, I'm sorry. I, I think, I'm sorry. I, I assumed you meant um, one by one for the roll call vote. I believe no, that's true. No, I meant, um, I meant, so now can we just vote to keep everybody the same the rest of the way or do we need to do it individually? I think if you're okay with going with Dave's suggestion of going with the whole group as is, then that is allowable if you as the president agree to that. And if you would prefer doing it singly, you could do it that way. Well, I, I think in light of things, we should probably keep moving along here. So um, I think that's a good idea, Dave, thank you. Um, I think you do check everybody, I will do a vote on that though all together is that is that right but right? you'd have yeah just making sure that the um the people being voted upon are okay with those <laughs> nominations yes um so then do we have is everybody okay that's in this position to keep it, it it's okay with me um i just want to make sure that you might want to ask if there's any other uh, nominations just to make sure there's no other yes sure is, what, yeah. are, are there any other nominations <laughs> Okay, so um, I think we should probably still do a, a roll call on this. We conduct it this way. And Donna Ingman, I say yes. Steve LeClaire? Just as a little uh, catch up, I'll support Dave's motion. Yep, sounds great. Thank you. And, and then, so and Donna then. said yes. Steve LeClaire says yes. And Jeff Stevens? Yes. And Terry Janke, well, she's still. Yes, can you oh, hear me good. now? Awesome, Tara, welcome back. Dallas Mama. Bond? Yes. Dave Mackey? Yes. And Jennifer Stout? Jennifer? Uh, she's on mute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So everybody was in favor, no one opposed, no one abstained, so motion carries. Okay, so now we will move along to see Recommendation to adopt the following dates for 2021 Board of Education meetings on the third Monday of every month. And as you can see, we have February 15, 2021 through January 17, 2022. Do we have a motion to accept this? I'll make a motion. I'll, I'll support that. And um, any discussion on these dates? Okay. Donna Ingman, yes. Steve LeClaire? Yes. Jeff Stevens? Yes. Tara Janke? Yes. Dallas Bond? Yes. David Mackey? Yes. And Jennifer Stout? Yes. All in favor, none opposed, none abstain. Motion carries. Okay, so we're going to move along to recommendation to designate Danielle Bassanio as the person responsible for posting notices of board meetings was Christina Norlin as the alternate. So do we have a motion? 
I'll make a motion to designate Danielle Boisano. All right. And do we have I'll a second? I'll support, I'll support that. that. Okay. All right. Is there discussion on this at all? All right. So all in favor, Donna Ingman, yes. Steve LeClaire. Yes. Jeff Stevens. Yes. Terry Janke. Yes. Dallas Bond. Yes. David Mackey. Yes. And Jennifer Stout. Yes. Okay, all in favor, no one opposed, no one abstained. Motion carries. Do we have a recommendation to approve Thurn Law Firm PC of Lansing as school attorney? Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve Troon Law Firm as our school attorney. And, and I'll support that. Do we have a discussion? Okay, all in favor, Donna Ingman, yes. Steve LeClaire. Yes. Jeff Stevens. Yes. Terry Janke. Yes. Dallas Bond. Yes. David Mackey. Yes. Jennifer Stout. Yes. Okay, all in favor then. None opposed, none abstained. Motion carries on that one. Recommendation to appoint Superior National Bank and the Michigan Liquid Asset Fund as banks of depository with check signing and other privileges to the following. So we have um, general fund with Tyler Kinnanen, Christina Norland, Jeff Stevens, activity fund with Tyler Kinnanen, Christina Norland, debt retirement fund with Tyler Kinnanen and Christina Norland, payroll with Tyler Kinnanen and Christina Norland, and recommendation to authorize ability to do ACH files and electronically transfer district funds to Tyler Kinnanen, Kelly Deathstram, CCISD payroll specialist, and Jason Owl, CCISD business manager. Do we have a motion? I'll make okay. that motion. Okay. I'll, I'll support. Sounds good. Okay. And is there discussion on this at all? Okay. Just a moment. So, was that Jeff sure. supporting? Um, was that Jeff making the motion and Dallas supporting? Correct. Correct. The other way around. Oh. No. No, Jeff, you you made the motion. I supported. Oh, really? Yeah. Me, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So I um, started. No to. <laughs> All right. So no discussion on that, and so we will. Uh, um, just a quick question. Uh, given that Jeff is one of the designees, uh, does he need to abstain from this vote? That has never come up before. I have not been instructed as such. I will just to just to be Doesn't, just to cover. I just will. Yeah, yeah. it's not going to hurt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll go for a roll call. Um, Donna Ingman, yes. Steve LeClaire. Yes. And Jeff Stevens, abstain. Okay. Tara Janke. Yes. Dallas Bond. Yes. Dave Mackey. Yes. Jennifer Stout. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Yes. And none opposed. All abstained. Motion carries. Moving on to G. Recommendation to appoint Rucola Negro and Associates CPAs PC as auditor for 2021. And I'll make that motion. Do we have support? Uh, I'll support. All right. Do we have a discussion on it? All right. Roll call vote. Donna Ingman. Yes. Steve LeClaire. Yes. Jeff Stevens. Yes. Terry Janke. Tara. Yes. Okay. Dallas Bond. Yes. yes. Dave Mackey. Yes. And yes. Jennifer Stout. Yes. All right. So all in favor, none opposed, none abstained. Motion carries. Moving on to H. Recommendation to designate the current board president as a DBTC voting delegate to the Michigan Association of School Boards 2021 Delegate Assembly, also as representative for the Copper Country Association of School Boards with the vice president as alternate. So I guess Steve and I can abstain from this too. Abstain. Is, um, it, is there a motion, first of all? I'll make the motion. I'll support. There okay, now there's discussion on it. Okay, done. Roll call, Donna Ingman abstain. Steve LeClaire? Yes. Abstain, okay. Jeff Stevens? Yes. Tara Janke? Yes. Dallas Bond? Yes. Dave Mackey? Yes. And Jennifer Stout? Yes. 
All right, and then we're going to move on to I recommendation to designate Ms. Sarah Moylan, an athletic director, to handle district responsibilities in the absence of Mrs. Christina Norland. If she is unavailable, the re these responsibilities would include, but not limited to, representing making, representing making decisions and signing documents on behalf of the superintendent. If the superintendent can be reached, the substitute will confer by phone, text, or email with the superintendent in matters of importance. So move. So and I will support that. And do we um, have a discussion on it? Okay. All right. Then we'll go to roll call vote. Donna Ingman, yes. Steve LeClaire? Yes. Jeff Stevens? Yes. Tara Janke? Yes. Dallas Bond? Yes. Dave Mackey? Yes. And Jennifer Stout? Yes. Okay. All those in favor, none was opposed. No one abstained and motion carries. Okay. Now we'll be here. Now we will hear the extended COVID-19 learning plan check-in from Superintendent Norland. Yes. Okay. So first thing we um, discuss is reconfirming how instruction is going to be delivered during the 2021 school year. And we do continue in the elementary with in-person being the primary mode of instruction. And the alternate for elementary is our online platform. And in middle high school, we continue with in-person being our primary mode of instruction. Those who so choose can also be online learners using our Edmentum platform. And at the high school level, ninth through 12th, students also have the distance learning option where they can live stream using Google Meets um, into their classes. Um, the vast majority of our students are in person and we do not have any plan for a hybrid model, which would mean, uh, for example, one day on, one day off for various groups of students. So that is our current mode of instructional delivery during this pandemic. Um, second point is um, public comments from parents or guardians on the extended learning plan on this very plan that we're discussing right now. So is there any public comment from parents or guardians on this? Thank you. I um, am hearing none, so I will go on and report on our uh, weekly two-way interaction rates for the month of December. We had three weeks, um, first being November 30th, actually, through December 4th, and the fourth week being our Christmas vacation week, our first week of Christmas vacation, and our um, student engagement rates remained high, so we're very pleased about that. Week one, we were at 96%. Of students engaged in their learning week two 97 and week three also 97 percent so um, i attribute our extremely successful rates of engagement to um, our excellent teachers and the way that they do engage our students and um, do provide really quality remote instruction and also do work to go after the students who may not be showing up so i don't think we would have those kind of rates if we didn't have the excellent faculty that we do have um, and now the board is going to be asked, I think by you, Donna, um, to confirm, um, to approve really this reconfirmation of the instructional, instructional delivery methods that we're using, which is again, in-person um, with online and distance learning as options and no hybrid. Okay, so then we'll, we'll have a motion. Is anybody gonna make the motion for this? Do we have one? I'll make a motion. Okay, and, and I'll support it. And do we have a discussion on any of this? Uh, not really a discussion, but just to, to add another point, uh, we certainly give credit where credit is due and our faculty is amazing, but we also are blessed with very diligent parents who understand the gravity of the situation. And that's why we're not faced with the situations that uh, Mr. Zimmer described earlier in the meeting. That's very true, Dave, yes. Mm -hmm. Very true. Any other discussion? All right, then we will move on to voting. Donna Ingman, yes. Steve LeClaire? Yes. Jeff Stevens? Yes. Tara Janke? Yes. Dallas Bond? Yes. Dave Mackey? Yes. Jennifer Stout? Yes. Okay, all in favor, none opposed, none abstained. Motion carries. 
All righty, so we're gonna move on to number seven, consent agenda. Is there a recommendation to approve the item as the consent agenda? And do you have any corrections of the minutes? This would be um, one numbers one, two, three, the regular board meeting minutes for November, financial statements for the previous month, checks written in the previous month. Is there a motion? I move we recommend, I recommend to approve the um, consent agenda. Okay. And I'll support. Okay. All right. You can take it. <laughs> okay. Any discussion on the consent agenda? All right, Ethan. Donna Ingman. Yes. Steve LeClaire. Yes. Jeff Stevens. Yes. Tara Janke. Yes. Dallas Bond. Yes. Dave Mackey. Yes. Jennifer Stout. Yes. All right. All in favor? None opposed, none abstained. Motion carries for that too. All right. Now we're going to move on to reports. Superintendent Principal Report, please, Christina. Okay, so, oops, gotta find the right page. <clears throat> so first of all, it is school board recognition month. So thank you to our school board for your diligence in serving our school and community. It is not always easy, but your work is much appreciated by me and I know many, many people in our community. So thank you for your service, school board. Thank you. As you know, we returned to school on January 4th after our Christmas break, which was two weeks long again this year. And we were very excited to have our ninth through 12th graders, our high schoolers back in the building in person. Um, the, the first few days, you, you could definitely tell they were tired, maybe not used to that same schedule, but very, very happy to be here. And the teachers and staff are also really happy to have them back in our building again. It's not the same without them. So um, the vast majority of our students are in person. Um, I just thought I would share those rates with you. It's 2% of our elementary who are um, at home and learning using our online platform and 8% of our middle high school students not in person. So um, it's great to have so many students with us and it's good to be able to provide options for those who are not able to be with us. Um, as Tim reported, we moved into the new offices on Friday, so that was very exciting. It's really fun to see the students and other folks pass by and just peer in through the new sliding glass window. Um, it's it's going to be really, really great to be centrally located right there. It's already proven to be a very helpful location for that office. Um, and we've also gotten a lot of compliments just in general from teachers, staff, and kids on the improvements all through the building. People are really excited about the good things that are happening in our school. And uh, along the lines of good news, our school lunch program continues to be putting forth excellent food. So thank you to our lunch staff. Ms. Judy does a wonderful job. Um, we've got a new worker, Hannah Jackman. She's doing a great job. We have others there in the lunchroom as well. It's, it's really a team effort and the lunches are great. Um, we have also received compliments on our high school teachers delivering really high quality remote learning. Um, and so I just want to say well done to our high school teachers. It, it is not easy. It is very difficult to teach in that way. We had to every day. And if you ask students what it was like, they'd say it's like school. And that's exactly what we want them to say. It wasn't easier. Um, it wasn't a slack off time. It was quite rigorous. And we were able to move forward with our content. So big thanks to our teachers for doing a phenomenal job. We have parent-teacher conferences coming up next week, and those will take place by phone. We did that at the end of, or in the middle of first trimester as well, and it went all right. I think everybody would rather be in person, but we are, um, we're going to be observing all the safety measures that we can, and so we will be again by phone. And uh, along the lines of safety measures, I would also like to use this opportunity to thank the Western UP Health Department, because they have made school staff in our county a priority in allowing us to receive the COVID vaccine. So um, not all health departments across the UP are making that decision. So I wanna um, point out that the WUPHD is doing that and it's very much appreciated by us. And um, those on our staff who are gonna be getting the vaccine will um, receive the first dose of it later this week. 
Christina? We have our Christina? I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's some feedback coming in from somewhere. It sounds really crackly. Um, Is I, anyone else hearing that? There's a couple yes. I am too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a couple people that don't have their mute on. I don't know where it could be coming from. Okay, if, if you are not muted and you're in the meeting, can you please take a moment and mute and we'll see if that helps at all? All right, so I'm gonna continue talking to see if that's any better. Can somebody give me, can you give me a thumbs up or something to let me know if this is any more clear with other folks muted? I'm seeing a couple of thumbs up. Yes, and head, head's nodding. Okay, I will continue then. Thank you. All right, I was just about to report that we do have a new third grade teacher, Mr. Dan Stahl, and that is really going well. He's doing a wonderful job. He stepped right in. Um, the kids are really enjoying him. It's just awesome to have that third grade class split both in the morning and in the afternoon with two high quality teachers. So that's going well. And we have um, transitioned to a new special education teacher situation with Ms. Perkins taking on the K through eight and Mr. Irizarry taking on the nine through 12. And that is also going very well. Um, Mrs. Butler has assumed the guidance counseling responsibilities. That is also going really smoothly. I'm just happy to report so much good news here. And um, we did hire the new building substitute teacher slash part-time teacher slash COVID compliance officer. And um, Ms. Erin Johnson is also doing a phenomenal job, really a go-getter and gets things done um, efficiently and, and really well. So uh, really great news on the staffing front. Um, okay, so in, um, in other news, we have positive behavior interventions and supports, the framework that I've talked with you about before, also known as PBIS, and we are continuing with that initiative. It is really, really a great thing for our school, and, um, and it it's continues to go well. The elementary um, very specifically and intentionally reviewed the school expectations following Christmas break to give the students a refresher on what is expected all throughout the school. That went well. Um, last week was a really fun day in the high school on Friday, Ms. Moylanen and Mrs. Butler organized again a Bolts Bling store where the students in Midland High School who had earned Bolts cards um, for, for doing the right thing and being basically caught doing the right thing. Um, they could spend those Bolts cards on all kinds of really fun items. So the kids really enjoyed that. And a big thank you to Mrs. Moylanen and Mrs. Butler for their work on that. Um, and also just more good news on that, the behavior referrals continue to be very low this year. So we're really pleased with that. Great work teachers, great work staff and great work students. Uh, Multi-tiered systems of support is kind of the overarching um, framework for PBIS and it, it includes the academic side as well as the behavioral side. You might remember the um, triangle I've showed you before. This isn't the best picture, but the idea is that 80% of our students are in the green larger part of the triangle where the, the basic um, ways of instruction and um, behavior expectations work well to meet their needs. And then we've got about a 15 or so percent area that is in the yellow zone. And those students need a little bit more support, a little bit more intensive instruction. And then at the top, about 5% of the students, of course, it varies school by school, um, need some um, a lot more support, whether it's in reading or math or in behavior. And we've got that framework established and um, it's, it's, it's a nice way to um, keep, keep organized about what's happening with um, students academically and behaviorally. And we do use this uh, multi-tiered system of support in academics as well. And in fact, this Friday, we are having a half day and our elementary and service will be mostly focused on looking at how the students have done on their benchmark assessments and how we should therefore group them to teach them the skills a little bit more intensively that they still need. We're really pleased to be working with the ISD on the MTSS and the PBIS thing. Okay, um, athletics update from Mrs. Moylanen, our athletic director. Practice for winter sports has finally begun. We're really excited to have the sounds of basketballs in our gyms again. And under the current orders, games are allowed to begin now on February 4th. And most nights that we have scheduled games will be triple headers so that both boys and the girls team will be playing the same night. 
And uh, we are uh, we did have a schedule set, and then the start date for contests was pushed back. So things are up in the air again. But Mrs. Moylanin is um, working on rescheduling some of the non-conference games. Um, it's also looking like under the recent order, there will be allowed a limited number of spectators at the games. So um, hopefully that will be the case. We will have, have some students in our stands. And um, all home games, though, will be available on the NFHS network streaming, as you know. So if most people won't be able to continue to, to, to come to those games in person, but you can still watch them on NFHS. And finally, it is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And so I wanted to share a quote, intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. And I wanted to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. today and um, share that here in Dollar Bay, we do strive to offer, and we do offer an excellent academic education for our students, but we also intentionally strive to help build them, uh, the students into strong, good quality citizens. And our students are very lucky to have every day in front of them models of safe and responsible and respectful behavior. So we work at both of those and thank you, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for sharing that quote. And that ends my report. Ms. Norland, I do have one quick question. Abby said in the background that she heard the Sparks cards. When are you doing that? She missed it and she doesn't know exactly when they're doing the cards. <laughs> okay, it sounds like she's a little, a little mixed up. Send her to me first thing in the morning and I will, I will explain the whole thing to her. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Sure. Donna, are you are you available? Disrupting you. Now I'm back. Okay. Moving on to action and discussion items. Do we have a motion to for the completion of DB coursework of Gabe Web Gabe Webin after the second trimester? You want to talk about that at all, Christina? Um, we do have three students, again, asking for the board's blessing on their early completion of graduation requirements. We, we casually call it early graduation, although they will still graduate with the rest of their class in May. Um, yep, three, three nice young men today. They, they wrote some very nice letters on their own, sharing what their future plans are. And I would suggest that the board give them their blessing. All right, so do we have a motion for Gabe? I'd be happy to make that motion. Um, all those letters from these three students were excellent, and I think all three of them should be approved. But I'll make a motion for awesome. Gabe. Nice, I will support. Oh, okay. Jeff, just to clarify, did you make the motion to approve all three of the boys, um, Gabe, Cameron, and Taylor? If I can, I will, yes. Yes, I believe you can. Donna, is that okay with you? Absolutely. And, yeah. yep, and I'll second that. Okay, sounds good, Dallas. Okay, so I'm taking it. There's no discussion on this. <laughs> is there discussion, anyone? Okay, then we'll go through the roll call. Donna Ingman, yes. Steve LeClaire? Yes. Jeff Stevens? Yes. Terry Janke? Yes. Dallas Bond? Yes. David Mackey? Yes. Jennifer Stout? Yes. Okay, all in favor, none opposed, none abstained. Motion carries. So we have all three of them down there because we had Taylor Pakala and, and Cameron Rosalind. So good luck to those young good men. So moving on, is there any old or new business to discuss? Anyone? Nothing? Okay. Great. Okay. So just going back to um, when I had um, talked about the one Steve and I abstained from, I don't know how picky we have to get, but I think I, I may have said um, that all were in favor when actually there would have been five in favor and two abstained for the record. So, okay, 
So there's no new or old business. So do we have a motion for adjournment? I'll move for adjourning. Okay, I'll support. And any discussion on adjourning? All righty. So Donna Ingman, yes. Steve LeClaire. Yes. Jeff Stevens. Yes. Tara Janke. Yes. Dallas Bond. Yes. David Mackey. Yes. Jennifer Stout. Yes. All righty. Donna. Yes. Yes. All right, this is Kristen. I have one burning desire that I for, I didn't see my notes. Um, could I add a very a pretty short comment or addendum to my comment? I, yeah, you can add addendum. I just rather not wait till next month. So I apologize. I know it's not part of the format, um, but I really wanted to um, to share this with the board. Um, one of the things that was presented in the suggestions was the um, suggestion to do public comment both at the beginning and the end of the meeting. And I wanna share with the board that they have implemented that suggestion at the Osceola Township meeting, and it has really um, benefited the meeting. The community feels more heard if there are topics that come up during the meeting that really affected people and that they wanna give immediate feedback on, they can do that. And um, Mark Halkel, I would really want to um, point out that he just, he makes that an essential part of the meeting. And I provided that suggestion um, written format, but I also wanted to say it verbally because I think it would enhance the meeting and the, uh, the public's opportunity to comment and the board's opportunity to consider that. So I wanted to say it out loud during the meeting and I appreciate the board uh, staying extra to hear me out on that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so none was, everybody was in favor, no one was opposed, no abstain from adjourning for our meeting. So thank you everybody and have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.